Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, hi. How you doing? Welcome, everybody, to the Pre-Stream Podcast. I <clears throat> and Phil. That is correct. That is my name. That is what I am called and addressed as. Even though some people like to call me other things. We won't name those hundreds of things that people call me. Instead, I will say, welcome to the pre-stream podcast. And welcome to a big hype new release day. Today is Friday the 10th of June 2022. And I'm excited. Are you? Why or why not? Why wouldn't you be? You should be excited for today. Today's a new day. Today's another day on this earth. We all get to have vibrance and life together. Why would you not be excited for that? What could possibly be keeping you from having an exciting day? Oh. Okay, I see. Sorry. Anyway, welcome to the Pre-Stream Podcast. Um... I am excited for today, because today is a big new release day. Um, honestly, it's been a while since we actually had even a mid-sized new release. Like, if you take a look, you know, for like two, three months there, like February, March, April, we had several high-profile new releases, back to back to back to back, right? And then they kind of died down, and for the last month to month and a half, there's really been next to nothing. So today, to actually have a high-profile new release to play with you guys... And especially the type of game that it is in the quarry. A game that, over the years, people have said they really enjoy watching me play. Because this is the style of game that really lends itself well to my style of kind of improv commentary. And also, we have a great time together with horror games, just in general, right? A lot of people are very pumped for this. I am, too. You know, one of my favorite playthroughs I remember doing of all time was Until Dawn. Back in, I want to say it was 2015. I still haven't looked this up. I can't remember if it was 2015 or 2016. But I remember that playthrough, okay, was pretty much the first kind of, like, interactive horror movie-style game playthrough that I had ever done. I had done other ones in the past, like Heavy Rain, which was more murder mystery and thriller. I had done, like, the Walking Dead series, which obviously has horror elements to it. But this was, like, an actual emulation of like a 1980s slash 90s horror movie right and in a lot of ways some people criticized it and said is it even a game to which i answered well yeah it is but even if you don't feel it is it doesn't matter it's still fun and entertaining and the point is uh i'm here to entertain all of you to have fun interactive entertaining experiences right or else why are we all here are we here to be super serious and talk about the issues that's what you're here for you're probably here for the wrong reasons although on the pre-stream podcast today we will talk about a few topics <laughs> fyi some of the topics i'm going to cover today one is about the quarry in particular uh i also want to talk a little bit about a follow-up to yesterday's discussion of of the last of us and then an update on god of war ragnarok okay so some interesting stories to discuss on today's pre-stream podcast when we get to that segment but anyway <clears throat> um yeah we're here to have a good time together. And whether you can argue or uh, whether or not this game is, is a game, I don't really care. It's your opinion. You're entitled to it. I like it. It's fun. It's interesting. Uh, I, I'm a fan of old school style horror movies. Meaning all those kind of cliche filled uh, slasher flicks, uh, you know, horror villain chasing down a, a cast of characters trying to kill them in various ways from like the 1980s and 90s, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, those kind of things. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I saw when I was younger, which is really weird because I did see it when I was younger. Um, Yeah, I, uh, I, I, what I like about it is that it can't be fun. You don't take those movies seriously. You just laugh along with the silliness of it. And of course, sometimes there's really gory kills that are entertaining and you laugh because you know it's not real. It's just silly over the top stuff right? And I feel that can translate well into a video game in particular until Dawn really captured that essence really well, okay? Then, the same company, Supermassive Games, that made Until Dawn decided to make an anthology series of horror, meaning every year they're pumping out a new game that's a shorter game. They're not super long games. They're maybe anywhere between five to eight hours long, right? Um, But that series of games called the Dark Pictures Anthology is a different style of horror game every year. 
Man of Medan, which was the first one, was more like a more realistic horror movie with a twist. Once the twist was known, eh, it wasn't as good anymore, right? There was no more air of mystery. Um, Little Hope was a supernatural thriller, more psychological horror than anything else, although at the same time there was definitely gore and jump scares and things like that um, with a twist ending. And then last year we had House of Ashes, which is more of a... <clears throat> almost like a sci-fi horror twist game, okay? So, they're all different, right? And that's good because every year you're getting some cool uh, variety in the horror genre. Well, The Quarry is a, not a Dark Pictures anthology game. It is a game much in the line of Until Dawn, the original game that kind of started this series uh, for Supermassive Games. And it's 10 hours long by all reports. Now, you guys know me. <clears throat> I'm an interactive streamer, and that means that as I stream, te technically I will you know, stop every once in a while to talk with you guys. Um, there's going to be interactions, shout-outs. There's going to be things that are going to extend the length of the game. So if the game really is 10 hours for one run, for us, maybe it'll end up being like 12, or maybe not. So here's the thing. In a game like this, your choices directly affect who lives or who dies. So if I make a bad choice, we might have someone dying within the first few hours of the game, and now their entire plot line will not be experienced because they're dead, you see? <clears throat> because of that, it may significantly shorten the length of the game. So we have no idea how this is going to go, all right? And by the way, just for the record, I have done everything humanly possible to stay away from spoilers of the game. Uh, the only actual video footage I saw of the quarry was yesterday during Summer Game Fest. There was a preview segment of it, <clears throat> and I watched that trailer that they played. That's it. I don't know anything else about it besides some of the actors, because we've been talking about the cast over the last couple of days here on my streams. But outside of that, I don't know anything about... <clears throat> Any of the uh, horror elements, supernatural elements of the game or anything like that, I'm going to be surprised experiencing it for the first time along with all of you. Now, undoubtedly, your first run in a game like these is your best run. Because when you play a game like this, if you don't know what's going to happen, right? If you, uh, you have no idea what's around the next corner, where's the jump scare coming, what's going to happen, a twist in the plot, that's the best part of the game. Once you've already played through it once, now... <clears throat> excuse me. The appeal of a second playthrough is that now you try to make alternate choices to keep various cast members alive or dead, right? So in the first playthrough, if someone dies right away, in the second run, I want to try to keep them alive through different choices, you see? Um, so, I'm excited. I Like I said, I, I like these kind of style of movies, and we've played this style of game before in Until Dawn. Some people to this day still say that Until Dawn is my favorite playthrough that I've ever done of theirs. And some people say that Until Dawn was the playthrough that they finally, like, noticed me for on the internet and that they've been watching my content ever since. So, how will this game translate? Will it be as good as Until Dawn? Will it be better than Until Dawn? I don't know. You know, I have no clue. I I'm, I'm just as excited for it as you guys. And I do have some expectations, I'll be honest. I would like it to at least be on the same <clears throat> level as, say, some of the Dark Pictures Anthology games. Am I really expecting it to be as good as Until Dawn? No. But maybe it will be. I don't know. By the way, you absolutely have to understand that there's going to be horror movie cliches and things in the game. Like, for example, I fully expect that it's going to be a slow build. Like, the first couple of chapters will probably be silly drama, building up the characters and things like that. Um, and then, like, once you get maybe, like, a third into the game, all of a sudden... Boom, supernatural things or, or horror movie style things will start happening to build up plot and get you start to, to get in chills and everything. And then probably about halfway to two-thirds through, there'll be another big spin twist and things that'll happen. And now it'll be like, oh my God, crazy shit going on left and right. <clears throat> and usually there's a big ending, a big, you know, explosive build of an ending as well, right? <clears throat> so, I'm hoping for it. I'm, hope, I'm actually hoping... More for horror movie cliches than anything else. Because those are classic things that you look for when you like this genre of, of, of kind of, you know, game and stuff. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Pretty cool.
Now, we're playing this all day today. This is all I'm doing on stream today. We're doing it now for three hours, and the late stream tonight at 6.45 p.m. Pacific time will be the continuation for another two hours. So it's all Corey all day long. So I hope you guys are ready for this. Now, why am I doing that? Because I want to try to uh, beat this game and get through a full run of it, hopefully by the end of this streaming week, which is the end of Monday. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I'm being honest with you. I don't know if we'll be able to. Uh, I'm very curious to see how far I get um, and see if we're going to be able to wrap it up or not. Okay. Um, I might change the schedule on the fly if need be. So, for example, right now, today, all day is the quarry. I guess we can go to the schedule segment. Tomorrow, the main stream is also the quarry. So, another three hours. That'll get us around eight hours in. Tomorrow night is <clears throat> Saturday night fights. Normally, it would be Friday night, but because we're playing the quarry today is a new release. Uh, we're doing them tomorrow night, and that's Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Only the second to last time I'm playing it. Only two sessions left before that collection is officially retired, and we move on to the new one coming out later this month. Okay. Then on Sunday, the mainstream is going to be me reacting to the Microsoft and Bethesda showcase event and then doing my recap reactions afterward. Now, Sunday night, the late stream. I currently have it scheduled as the conclusion of Uncharted 2. I don't have to do that. Okay, I don't. What we could do is we could play it by ear. And let's say by the end of tomorrow's mainstream... If we're really craving more and we want to keep going with this game and get more progress and make sure we can finish it this week, maybe we'll do more Corey on the late stream on Sunday night. Okay? And then on Monday, the main stream, for the first two hours, we'll be exploring the new PlayStation Plus subscription tier. We're going to get the highest level of subscription. We're going to jump in there, see what games are available, download some of them, try to play them, see how they run. We're also going to be trying the new PlayStation 3 streaming service that they're doing through this PS Plus membership. So we're going to fully <clears throat> explore it, all right? And then at 3 p.m., we're going to stop doing that because at 3 p.m., Capcom is doing a half an hour digital showcase where they're going to extrapolate and elaborate on the games they've already talked about, including Resident Evil 4 Remake and Street Fighter VI. So I'll be live reacting and then doing recap reactions to that to end that first stream. Then again, Monday night's late stream is up in the air and wide open. If we want to keep playing the quarry, and maybe that'll, I, I still need to keep playing to finish the first run, we have that open. If we've already beaten the quarry, then maybe I do Uncharted 2 that night. You see? <clears throat> so, let's see what happens with this game over the weekend. My, my full intention is to try to wrap up my first playthrough of the game by Monday night before I take my day off on Tuesday. Okay? Let's see. I, I really hope we can. I really hope we have a great time with it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um... I'm going to do my best to, to, to do my, my usual commentary style, entertain you, have a good time with the game, also interact with you guys, shout outs for, for contributions and all of that will all still be in effect, all right? Awesome. All right, that's the schedule for the week. Now, next week has been completely flipped on its own head, and here's why. Next week, we have a whole bunch of new stuff that's going on, all right? First of all, I am going to do a second run of the quarry at some point, Okay. In addition, I need to finish my, my playthrough of WWE 2K22. So one of the main streams will be that. Um, Ninja Turtles, TMNT, Shredder's Revenge comes out on Thursday of next week. It's on Game Pass. I'm absolutely playing this game. I'm actually very much hyped for it. I love the Ninja Turtle style side-scrolling beat-em-up brawlers of the 1980s and 90s. They're, they're some of my favorite arcade games. So I absolutely cannot wait to play that um, when it comes out on Thursday. Plus, it's online six-player co-op. That's going to be chaotic fun, all right? Um, I'm also going to be making sure that if I have any loose ends, like if I didn't finish Uncharted 2 or whatever, I want to finish that up, all right? So we got a good variety of stuff coming next week. i to try to finish up the lingering playthroughs. There'll also be Skyrim, but Skyrim is likely now going to be night streams rather than daytime streams. So that way, we could focus in on the Quarry second run, we could focus in on the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game and stuff during the daytime streams, okay? <clears throat> All right. Just so you know, that's what's going on next week. Now, also, there's a strong rumor that next week Nintendo will be doing a Direct, but there's no announcement for it as of yet. We don't know if it's true or not that this is going to happen. If it does happen, then yeah, there is a strong chance I'll be covering that as well, uh, but we need to know exactly if and when it's happening, and we don't know yet, Okay. So if there's a Nintendo Direct, likely I will cover that as well 
when it happens. All right. So. Do you have it, my friends? That's what's going on. Now, keep in mind, later on this month, there's even more going on. Let me actually open up my schedule here. Um, <clears throat> Sonic Origins releases June 23rd, which is a week from this Thursday. Yeah, a week from Thursday. The Capcom Fighting Collection comes out June 24th. Cuphead Delicious Last Course is on June 30th, and I'm also eyeballing Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, which is a Musu game. That's a follow-up to the plot of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Am I definitely playing it? No, I'm not confirming that. Uh, I'm interested in it. So I'd just like to toss that out there. Um, oh, hold on a second. We could do something really cool on the fly. Give me, give me like two minutes, not even. I'll be right over at my PC. I want to do something cool on the fly. For those of you who are here live on stream, this will be kind of neat. So hold on. I love being able to do things on the fly these days. It's pretty cool. I just added a thumbnail to the stream. So now the stream will actually have, say, the quarry live as I play this game over the course of this weekend. Um, I didn't have any thumbnails or anything yet, and I ju literally just got them. Just got them while we were sitting here. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> so there you go. I love that. All right, good shit. Now. Of course, Super Blind Man just says, oh my god, a thumbnail, just what I've always wanted. Ugh, oh, Super Blind Man, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I got him hyped, and then he's like, oh, shit. Alright, I promise, alright, it's actually not that even that good of a, it, it's an okay thumbnail. It just says the quarry, it's the red logo, and it's set over like a hillside, which is I guess where the game takes place up, up in the mountains. It kind of looks like the mountains with a red, the quarry logo over it, and it says live. So that's what the logo says. There! I gave you a verbal description of the of the uh, thumbnail. There you go. Okay. So, um, that's the deal for the week. That's the deal for the month. There's exciting things all month long. I really am excited. This is good stuff. Now, first of all, guys, very quickly, direct your attention to the members total. 624. We actually hit a new record. It was, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. 625. The most we've ever had on the channel is 625. All right, so we get just a couple new members today, we hit a new record. If we get someone gifting memberships today, we're absolutely hitting a new record, okay? So thank you for the ongoing support with memberships. I really appreciate that. Today, any contributions are appreciated. Memberships, gifted memberships, super chats, super stickers, tips. Yes, all reward tiers are in effect. Unlike yesterday when I was doing a live react and I told you guys I wasn't going to do it during the live react today, it's normal gameplay. So if we hit, you know, 50, 100, $150 in tips, yes, you will get your reward tiers right away, including, you know, hat, vest, all of that. The whole shebang. Okay? <clears throat> all right. Before we head into my three kind of topics of news discussion, what I would like to do is overall 
talk to you guys a little bit about how yesterday went. All right. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, yesterday I did a very, very lengthy live react event. The only other live react that I had done for a gaming event previous was the, the Sony State of Play the week before, but it was only a 30 minute presentation. Okay. In about a week's time, the video of my reaction to the Sony, Sony State of Play got about 5,000 views, maybe a little more than that, like 5,500 or something like that over about a week's time. Not bad. Certainly not amazing, but but not bad. Um, comments overall, people seem to enjoy the live react, but the other video I made, which is my in-depth recap reaction to that, um, got about eh, around 2,500 views, and people overall like that too. So what I'm seeing is there's definitely a, a split. Some people prefer the live reaction style. Some people actually prefer the recap reactions. And in particular, if you want to talk about yesterday's Summer Game Fest live react event that lasted two hours, I'm actually finding almost a 50-50 split. And what I mean by that is some people just don't want to watch two hours. You know, they're like, oh, it's way too long. And even watching Phil react to it is still too long. Two hours of investment of my time to watch a bunch of crap that's, that's shitty. I'd rather just watch Phil do his recap reactions and get a lot more kind of, you know, supplementary information. Also hear about his opinions on it because when he's watching the live react, he doesn't have that much of a chance to give a full opinion because you're moving on to the next thing constantly. It's absolutely true. In fact, the live react, here's what I could say. If there's something interesting, you never have enough time to talk about it because you're moving on to the next topic. If there's something shitty or boring you don't care about, you're stuck with nothing to say. So it's playing an insanely long you know, segment of Modern Warfare 2 gameplay that you've already seen this style of gameplay before if you've played Modern Warfare 2. You've either seen similar on the oil rig or when you were on the ship in the multiplayer, you've seen this gameplay before. You're like, there's nothing to say. This is stupid. I don't want to watch fucking 10 minutes of this and I'm stuck sitting here doing nothing, scratching my ass because this is what they're showing on the show. Um, and that's kind of how I felt with these live reactors. Like, man, when there was good stuff they were talking about, I wanted more and then they rushed through it and went to something else and I was like, ah, shit. Well, I guess I'll talk more about that when I do my recap reactions, okay? So that's basically... Uh, how it went yesterday um now you know views wise and everything so far so good i would say I, every single video <clears throat> of my live reaction as well as the recap reaction summary uh, segment all have over a thousand views and we're not even at 24 hours yet okay that's decent you know is it again is it oh my god phil's adopted react and now his channel is exploding with popularity no and do you want to know the truth I never expected it to. Some people seem to be under this oddball impression that, like, this React content is so virally popular all over the internet that if Phil starts to do it, he's going to see this giant growth and popularity. I never expected that. And I told you guys as much. I said that's why I was res resistant to doing it. Because I always felt that doing gameplay is more meaningful than doing this React-style content. And there's so many other people out there who already have made this React style content for years and years and years. If you're looking for dramatic reactions and shit, you're going to them. You're not going to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I have my fan base. We like what we like. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to have a reaction or a live reaction to anything that's going to get crazy traction and I'm going to get 100,000 views on it. It's never going to happen, you know? People seemed to act like that. I was like, oh, Phil, you, you're kill shooting yourself in the foot. You're really hurting yourself in your business by refusing to do this kind of content. So now I've done two of them, and no, it's not happening, which I didn't think it would, okay? I mean, honest, I tempered my expectations. Some other people were just, like, freaking out that this was going to explode or something, okay? So, anyway. In general, the React event went well yesterday, and I am happy to say there's, well, the weird, it's weird. Allow me to explain what I mean by this. When I was doing the live React yesterday, I split it into three parts. The, the presentation itself, Summer Game Fest, was about two hours long. Two parts are around 45 minutes, and another is just around half an hour, okay? <clears throat> Why did I split it up? Because they kept doing licensed content in the event. First, there was a freaking movie trailer for the Black Adam movie. I don't know what the hell that had to do with Summer Games Fest. The answer is nothing at all. Okay. Then there was a game called like Metal Hellsinger that had 
music in it, and I was afraid that that music was going to be licensed because it was real music from metal artists, you know, heavy metal. So I kept thinking, man, what I really need to do is I need to split this up. Because worst case scenario, let's say, for example, the entire video gets claimed and blocked because it has a Black Adam trailer in it. At least if I separate the parts, at least parts two and three will be visible to people on the internet after. Even if I have to deal with copyright issues on the one, at least there'll be another two that are visible. So that's why I kept splitting it. All right? So here's the weirdest thing that happens, okay? The live stream archive, which is basically the whole stream that I did, all right? It's one video. I always, when the stream is over, I set that to private, and then I upload the separate parts that I've actually recorded over the course of the day. They're very much more digestible than watching the archive that's like several hours of blow, okay? So, the live stream archive got claimed out the ass. There's like, I'm not even kidding, like five to seven different songs, plus the Black Adam trailer, and then something else too that I don't even know what it is. It just got claimed out the fucking butt. All right, I don't even think it's visible. I could be wrong. I didn't double check, but I'm pretty sure the archive stream was like claimed, blocked, fucked, fucked up the butt. Okay, so if I had actually tried to leave that, <clears throat> no one would have been able to see it. Okay, but I split it up, and then I uploaded it in separate parts. And basically, the parts are fine. But why did I cut out the Black Adam trailer? No. Did I cut out the music? No. For some reason, it was okay to upload it in parts only, but not in its entirety. I, I don't understand that. Unlo the only thing I can think of is that maybe Summer Game Fest was uploaded as a giant two-hour presentation to YouTube. So if you actually have an archive of the two-hour presentation, you get claimed and blocked. But if you split it, you don't. I, I really have no logical explanation. I'm just trying to rationalize it, and I can't really rationalize it. For some reason, the videos are okay. So enjoy, as long as you can, please keep enjoying. All right? Um, I don't know if they will still get claimed, blocked, or whatever in the future. There's still potential they could. That algorithm could still be running on YouTube. And I just got lucky and didn't get hit yet. But I hope you enjoy it, all right? So far, I've done two of these live React events. I've enjoyed doing them. You guys seem to like them, you know, so I'll just keep doing them as much as you like them. I'm not, by the way, I just want you to understand I'm not going to do this for every single digital event ever. If there's a reason, like right now, this is technically E3 week with no E3. This is the week when all these digital events are happening. And I'm excited to cover a lot of them for you, okay? No, I'm not going to be doing this all the time unless there's good reason. I'll give you an example. There's a strong rumor later this month there's going to be a very interesting state of play from Sony. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Oops, I struck my mic. Yes, if that one is true, then I'll probably cover that one. But if we're in the middle of the summer and all of a sudden uh, there's a random Nintendo Direct and there's not even like much information about it or anything that sounds interesting and it's like, you know, 8 in the morning, no, I'm probably not going to cover it. You see, it depends on what the subject matter is and if we're sure that it's something that everyone's going to be interested in seeing me cover. Like this week, this stuff, absolutely it is. But I'm not going to be doing absolutely all of them, Okay. Speaking of which, we're doing one tomorrow. Like I just said, tomorrow, Xbox Bethesda Showcase. So, just so everyone knows, tomorrow's stream is a lot different. No, I take this back. I'm completely confused. It's Sunday. Sunday is the next one. I, I thought that it was Saturday for some reason. Sunday, the 12th, is the next Live React event. My stream's starting much earlier than usual. Usually, my stream would start um, around 10.45 a.m. Pacific time, that is. Um, we're starting the stream... At 9 a.m., technically even earlier than that, I'm going to turn the stream on around 8.45 a.m., and the actual content, the pre-stream, will start at 9 a.m. on Sunday. So we'll do a pre-stream from like 9 a.m. to 9.45, <clears throat> then I'll switch over and we'll do the live react from 10 to as long as it runs. The rumor is it's going to be about a two-hour show just like uh, Summer Game Fest was. So yeah, we'll be doing that, okay? Fair enough? Ooh, excuse me. No, I'm not reacting to today's Netflix Geeked Week. <laughs> Netflix Geeked Week. I think I'll skip that one. Okay. Anyway. um, So there you have it. So, so far, so good. If you haven't watched the live react yet, 
to Summer Game Fest, there was some really good stuff in there and some really bad shit. <laughs> in my opinion, of course. Everyone's going to always disagree on these topics. But in my opinion, there was some really good stuff. Like TMNT Shredder's Revenge coming out next week and it's on Game Pass and they show great footage of it. I'm like, this is outstanding. I'm pumped. And then there's a fucking 10-minute Modern Warfare 2 segment and I might as well be taking a shit. <clears throat> so there you go. Give it a look. Let me know what you think. Leave comments on the video so I know what you think. If you have any suggestions for improvement, I'm all ears. All right? The other thing I want to say before we get to news, because now we're in the midst of this very busy week and everyone's forgetting, the nominations for my Viewer's Choice event are open. You can nominate the game you want to see as the upcoming Viewer's Choice event right now. If you're a member, there's a members-only section. It's under the community tab. There's a members-only post. Or I think if you actually go to the members section <clears throat> of my page, you can see the post itself separated from everything else. In that thread, you can nominate games you want to see me play for viewer's choice. But keep in mind there's criteria. For example, no lengthy RPGs. No games that don't have an ending. Like, don't nominate an MMO that doesn't end. Like, old school RuneScape. I'm not playing old school RuneScape, okay? Uh, that kind of shit. No visual novels. We're looking for a game that essentially I could do as a playthrough over the months of July and maybe into August. A, a nice summertime playthrough. Something for variety during the slower summer months. That's what we're looking for, okay? Now, if you're not a member, you can also nominate... Because there's a poll, excuse me, a thread posted on the community tab of my channel page here. And that's open to everyone. So if you're a member, you can nominate a game. And then you can actually go to the public poll and nominate again. That's perfectly fine. You're allowed. You basically get double nominations if you're a channel member. It's one of the advantages of being a member. Okay? <clears throat> Alright. So. Thank you guys. Please nominate games. Those nominations will run for the rest of this week and probably sometime in the next week. At one point, I will close it off and then we will tally up your nominations. Whatever games are the most nominated, all right, those will then put into a final poll. And that final poll, all right, will then determine what game will be the Summertime Viewer's Choice Playthrough. I'm very excited to see what you guys come up with. I haven't even looked yet. All I'm doing, I'm approving your posts every day and there's been like a hundred. 100 plus posts already like people are nominating in droves so i'm happy for that okay how many games can fit into a poll on youtube five depending on how many games get multiple nominations remember the more nominated a certain game is that's how it gets into the poll so if you get a game that was nominated by 10 different people that likely will hit the poll if the game was only only nominated by one or two it probably won't hit the poll you see <clears throat> if we end up getting um enough games that all have a ton of nominations, I could do two separate polls of five. We'll see what happens. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else before I get to the news stories that I want to talk about. Mm. 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 Eh. Let's get to the news stories. All right. The first story I'd like to talk about today is actually about the quarry, which is a very pertinent topic. We're about to play the game. So an interesting thing. I was actually talking with Super Blind Man this morning on Twitter, and he notified me. He was like, so an interesting thing about the game you're about to play, it has a mode that pretty much makes it accessible to those who, you know, have issues with eyesight or whatever. It would make it accessible to the blind. Um, but it's hard to... to it's hard to say whether or not this mode would be actually be considered playing a game. <laughs> I've never heard about anything like this before. So, this is director's mode. So, already, people have said that these narrative-style games from Supermassive, as well as the games from Quantic Dream, you know, over the years, that they... Oh, those aren't video games because they're just interactive narratives, but they're like watching a movie, right? People have argued this for over a decade pretty much, okay? I was always of the impression that there are many different kinds of video games to be enjoyed by a gaming audience, and whether or not it has an insane amount of gameplay, or very little, whether it has incredible amounts of challenge, or it's very easy, all right? As long as there is interaction and input into the game, it, it's still a game. You know, a movie is a movie when you press play, and it plays from start to finish, and there's absolutely no stake in the outcome you can't control it you can't change it it's just you watching an unchangeable work right same thing with a television show but with a game the whole idea 
is that there's some element of input, some element of interaction that changes the outcome. And, oh, I can make this character live or die. I can do this or do that. That's the point of the game, right? So as many semantics as people want to argue, as long as you have some kind of an input, I do feel that it's still a video game, okay? But this new director mode that is now in the quarry, I guess can actually challenge those conventions. And what I mean by that is, so this mode allows you to make choices before the game begins. You can actually choose personality types for certain characters, and you can make it so that they either make riskier choices or safer choices. You can make them smart or stupid, right? However you want to play it out, because basically when you watch a horror movie, usually the characters fall into these cliched, generalized roles. You'll have the dumb jock, or the bimbo, or the brainy kid, you know, or... The, the, the protagonist who somehow has plot armor. You know what I mean? Like, you can always have in a horror movie, you have these, like, stereotypical roles that each person plays. And so, with this director mode, you can essentially choose how those particular characters will behave in the game. And then you basically press play, and the game begins, and it plays itself. You don't interact with the game. The game controls itself. If you said this person's smart, they'll make smarter decisions and likely live longer. If you said this person's stupid, they'll probably die at the very first chance they have to survive. You see? Um, so you can do all these different kind of choices. And it, what it makes you is kind of like a director of almost a movie. When you think about it, the director of a movie, hey, do this, do that. Do it like this, do it like that. Right? That's interesting to me. And I can actually see a whole group of people who don't like this kind of game actually saying, you know what, I, if it's not really a game, but instead it's it's me directing a, a, an interactive work, a movie per se, they would like it. Now, this also does open up a whole new realm of accessibility. If there's no requirement for active inputs when the game is playing itself, you can essentially make these choices early and hit play, and anyone can enjoy this game. <clears throat> okay? This is very interesting to me. And I'm, I actually wonder, I wonder, would that be as enjoyable of an experience as just doing those on-the-fly decisions? I don't know. I mean, again, I haven't really uh, dabbled in it yet. Super Blind Man actually is saying something right now. He says, it literally may be a way for the blind to experience this game. Were I to work on these games, though, that wouldn't be enough. But since it does exist, I feel like it's worth my consideration. There you go. See, here's what I'm thinking. And this is just me talking from my own my own perspective, what I would do if I were making a game like this and I wanted to make it accessible is make it so that if there's a quick time event, all right, freeze the game and now have audio description of what's going on on the screen so that the person knows, okay, you can either go left or go right here, choose, right? There's no reason to have that timed input when the person can't actually see what's on the screen. Allow them to freeze and then have audio description of these things on the screen to tell you, oh, you could go right, you could go left here. You could grab the axe, or you could pick up a gun here, right? You could scream, or you could be quiet and close your mouth here, right? I think that would make sense. There's no reason to have the actual... The, the timed button inputs, essentially, are for someone like, who, who doesn't have that uh, issue, you know, seeing the screen, to have a, an element of surprise, like a jump, or, oh, you know... You should have been paying attention. Now, you, now your character dies because you weren't paying attention. You didn't hit the A button, right? But that element is taken away for someone who can't see. So just freeze the game and just have them make the choice. There's no reason to have that timed um, scenario, I don't think. Um, as for the, like dialogue choices and stuff, I don't see how that couldn't just play out exactly the same. Again, just with the audio descriptions on the screen of what the choices are, right? <clears throat> if anything, you would think a game like this would be one of the easier games to make accessible. Right? Interesting. Actually, Super Blind Man is saying, you're completely right. The events would be perfect moments for audio description. Hey, yeah, and there's no reason to not do that. How much, honestly, how much extra effort would it take to do that in a game like this? Not that much. You have one person who reads it. <laughs> Big deal. Oh, no. You have to pay one guy for, like, uh, you know, five hours of work to read a bunch of options. So. Interesting. Okay, but but I guess they opted for this director's mode. Um, 
Yeah, I know. See, see, Super Flyman says I really, it really would be easy, and I would. I'm trying to get Super Massive to look my way. I don't know that much about Super Massive. I don't. I almost feel like they're more of a movie studio than a game studio. When you look at them, their games, the way that they're played out, the fact that they have real actors doing real mocap and stuff, it almost makes me feel like that. Like, like they're more geared towards the artistic work, or it's supposed to be like a movie, and they're not really looking towards bigger picture stuff at this point. I ho I would hope they would. I would hope if the quarry is a success, we already know. The Dark Pictures Anthology is doing well. Sales-wise, they've already said it's exceeding what they initially wanted. Um, if the quarry does well, <clears throat> then this studio can maybe look to add more features and things into their games because I think it's a no-brainer. If anything, this is definitely the kind of series that could have accessibility features, okay? But anyway, I'm curious. Anyone out there, are you going to play this in director mode? And if you do, what do you think about it? Is it, is it would you say it's as fun as having the live interactions, like playing it normally? Or do you think it takes something away? Um, I'm interested. You know, would I play it in director mode? Eh. I, I feel like my first run, I want to experience the game as it's intended, you know, with the gameplay elements and everything. <clears throat> you see? All right. And Super Blind Man is saying he will do it in director mode and he's going to get back to me. Sounds good. I'm very curious to hear your experience and what happens and how you like the game. Cool. All right. So that was the first news story. The second new story I have today is in regards to God of War Ragnarok. Because, let me tell you guys, you want to talk about glaring omissions. All right? God of War Ragnarok was a no-show at Sony State of Play last week and was also a no-show at Summer Game Fest yesterday. And now, including me, people are all collectively scratching their heads and they're like, uh, what happened? Is this game still coming out? It's still supposed to be scheduled for a 2022 release. <clears throat> How on earth are we getting no information about it? Zero. At any of these events. These are the big gaming news events of the year. And there's nothing. Right? So, of course, what ends up happening is rumors start to spread. And the rumor hits the internet. Oh, guess what? Um, it's going to be delayed. It's definitely being delayed again. That's the hot rumor on the street. It's coming out in 2023 now. Don't expect it this week. In fact, some gaming news sites reported it with no actual fucking information. Like, they had no source. It was just, oh, this is a rumor because it didn't show up at the shows. It's going to be delayed till 2023. That is not a fucking news story. That is hearsay. That is rumor. That is speculation. It should never be reported as, like, an article that this is happening. Okay? So then what ended up happening was something else. So... There was an update. Okay? The update is as follows. There was a placeholder date for the game's release that was amongst websites and retail stores. And the placeholder date was September 2022. Now, why was it September? What that means is that they were planning on releasing the game by the end of the third quarter of the year because these release date placeholders are quarterly based. So it would either be like um, March... June, September, or December. Those would be the four placeholder dates, okay, for game releases. So, originally, the placeholder date was September, meaning, oh, it would have come out before September. Well, all of a sudden, many different websites, including retail store websites, moved their placeholder dates from September to December, all collectively at once. Now, of course, this is all speculation, but... The gaming news sites that are so hungry for data on God of War Ragnarok all start reporting, oh, well, since they moved the placeholder dates from September to December, it must mean that they have insider info that they're not sharing because they're not allowed, but they actually know what the target release date is. And if they're moving it from September to December, that means that it's coming out by the end of the year or else they would have moved it to like March of next year. Now, is there a chance that what they're reporting here is true? Yes. Is there a strong chance? Probably. Because you would think at this point, if God of War Ragnarok was going to be delayed, we are now halfway through the year, we would have been told. All right? There's no reason for them to wait to delay it. If you're going to delay it, just delay it now, and then we all know to temper our expectations for the rest of the year. Right? <clears throat> I would say... As someone who's been, you know, covering the industry now for around 14 years, from all the data that I can see around me, and also from experience, I still feel 
that God of War Ragnarok will be coming out in 2022. I don't know when, but I feel like it's still on pace. If it wasn't, they would have delayed it. Okay? But, can we outright say, confirm that? No! But these news websites are running stories on it. It's like... <laughs> oh, God of War, confirmed. It's coming out like November now. Where did you see that data? Where do you see any data that says it's coming out in November? There's no... It doesn't exist. They're making shit up now to have news stories. Yes, it bothers me. It does. I hate that shit. I hate it because we're all gamers, right? We all enjoy video games. We're all excited for God of War. We all want to know when God of War Ragnarok's coming out. For the most part. I know maybe some of you don't. But it was a great game. God of War 2018 <clears throat> it was an outstanding game. A great reboot for the franchise. And we absolutely are, are heatedly anticipating new, news information. About the next one. I was dying to see it yesterday at, at Summer Game Fest. And when it wasn't there, I was very disappointed. Okay? Admittedly. But that doesn't mean I have to sit here and lie or make shit up. What is it with people on the internet who, who are just so dramatic and they just have to constantly be doing this hearsay gossip shit? Listen. If you don't know anything, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Seriously. If you have no factual basis to talk about something, then don't. Stop it with the speculation. Stop it with the with this. Oh, I have a oh, I have a feeling. I have the hearsay. This and that. And then the worst part is that these news sites then run it as like a factual topic, and you see a headline: God of War Ragnarok on pace for a November release. It says fucking who? There's no data. There's literally nothing to say that. But they're running the articles. <clears throat> <laughs> And these are reputable news websites that run these stories. They're supposed to be relaying factual information. They're getting paid thousands of dollars in advertisement revenue and things to maintain their business model. And they, they put out crap. Da! It pisses me off, if you can't tell. It does. It irks me. <clears throat> okay. Now, my third and final story for the day is about The Last of Us. Now, hold on. Hold on. Don't run for the hills yet. I heard three people already ran out of their rooms and slammed their phones down. They don't want to hear me talk about this again. Hold on. This is a follow-up story to the story from yesterday. Yes, I am going to reiterate and extrapolate upon some of the discussion from yesterday of The Last of Us 1 remake. But there's actually a different spin to it that's positive for those who are fans of The Last of Us. All right? Okay. Relax. Everyone sit down. Don't leave. <laughs> I, I promise you, I'm not going to go crazy. I already did that yesterday, all right? I already got that off my chest. I don't have to go crazy today. If I can help it. Okay, <laughs> if I can help it. All right, so as you guys know, yesterday during Summer Game Fest, a giant segment about The Last of Us with uh, Neil Druckmann coming out once again. Uh, talking about, you know, the sales of Last of Us 2 and how good they were and how it was the most awarded game ever. And then talking about Last of Us, uh, they're, they're making a multiplayer game of The Last of Us that's going to be a standalone multiplayer experience set in San Francisco, but they don't have any real information on that yet. Um, and then there's The Last of Us TV series is wrapping up filming, and the first season will be out soon. Not soon, excuse me. But the first season will be out because they, they finished filming. Now, of course, they have to edit it and everything. And then there was the announcement... That was not really the, the announcement. Um, it, wa it was already leaked on the internet that Last of Us 1 was going to be have a modern remake on PlayStation 5 and PC later, but PlayStation 5 exclusively to launch. It was coming out September 2nd. <clears throat> it would have modernized graphics using a new engine running on PS5 and also would have new gameplay elements, basically taking the gameplay elements that were added in Last of Us 2 but putting them into The Last of Us 1. Now... If you want my full take on this subject, watch yesterday's recap and reactions. All right? Because I go into this fully in my recap reactions to the Summer Game Fest event, and I go off. Because it's one thing to remake the game. It's another thing to remake the game twice in, in a decade, which they have done. Last of Us 1 came out on PS3, then immediately was remade, remastered, whatever you want to call it, on PS4. Today... You can play that on PS4. It runs very well. It looks good. You can play that PS4 version today 
on your PS5 and it looks really good and runs really well. It's not like... I, I want to give you guys some perspective here. Okay? I want you to think about the Super Nintendo... Inter- Excuse me. Wow, I already misspoke. I screwed this up, this comparison. Let me start over. I want you to think about the Nintendo Entertainment System, the original console, or the Famicom. All right? I want you to picture in your minds Super Mario Brothers. <clears throat> little bleep, bloop, 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 bloop. You're jumping on the Goombas. Right? Okay. I want you to think about Zelda. Top down original Zelda. Okay? Classic games, right? Classic stuff. Now, I want you to fast forward two console generations later. Not to Super Nintendo, but to Nintendo 64. Now, I want you to think about Super Mario 64 and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, okay? Think about those two games in your head. Think about the difference, (laughs) okay, in two console generations. It was less than a decade, by the way, between Super Mario Brothers and original Zelda and Super Mario 64 and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, all right? Think about that. In two console gens, the insane jump in graphics, in gameplay elements, in the way games were developed, in the size of games, everything about games completely changed in a decade, right? All right? Fair enough. So when you're buying Super Mario 64 or you're buying The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, two consoles later, and they charge you a full retail price for those games, right? You're like... Oh, that's, wow, completely justifiable. It's a whole new world. It's not even, yes, the elements of the core games from the NES are there, but my God, you want to talk about a game that's different now because it's two consoles later and the worlds are completely different and the plots are different. Everything's new, right? Warrants a full outright purchase. Now, I want you to think of The Last of Us on PS3. For those of you who played it back in the day on PS3 like me, Right, who did those those first run playthroughs of it? Think about your experience of The Last of Us on PS3. All right. Now, just for the hell of it, if you played it on PS4, all right, I want you to think about The Last of Us on PS4 and the differences. For me, the one difference was the frame rate. The frame rate was much better on PS4. It was smooth as opposed to on PS3. It was 30 frames and a little choppy. It was buttery smooth on PS4. I liked that. Okay. Now. I want you to think about this game on PS5. Now, we haven't played it yet, so it's kind of an unfair comparison, admittedly. We haven't played the game yet, right? But I want you to think about the the direct comparison I'm making, all right? From the NES to the the, Nintendo 64, a completely new gameplay experience, new gameplay elements, new graphics, everything new, warranting a new purchase in that franchise. Today, Naughty Dog is going to sell you The Last of Us 1 again, two consoles later. It's the same time frame, the same time window of NES to N64. It really is. They're going to charge you full retail price for this game, okay? But it's the same game, the same story, the same mocap, the same elements with some minor tweaks. Okay, yes, the graphics look better. They, They put in a new graphical engine. All right. Definitely, if you look at the models of Ellie or Joel, there's more detail to them. They look more realistic and more gritty. Okay. But if anything, when you do a side by side comparison of the PS3 to the PS5 versions of Last of Us 1, it's a testament to how good this game looked on PS3. Other PS3 games didn't look nearly as good. This game already looked superb on PlayStation 3. It's not that big of a jump. I don't care what anyone says. You want to know what the real difference is? The lighting, the shadows, and the level of little details on the models. Not the models themselves. It's not a giant leap. They added in a few other elements to make it look pretty, right? It would be like the original Star Wars films with added pretty visuals, because we all know how well that went. All right, that's a horrible comparison. George Lucas ruined his original trilogy, and that's unfair. I don't think that this one's going to ruin Last of Us 1. That was terrible. It was completely unfair, hitting below the belt. Neil Druckmann is not uh, George Lucas. Yeah. But anyway, um, 
The point I'm making here is, really the point I'm making here is, they're reselling this game at full price. Two console gens later, all right? Same game. Yes, there'll be some new gameplay elements. We don't even know how well those will be implemented. And another thing that no one seems to be talking about and no one has really asked about yet or gotten a straight answer, what about the accessibility features of The Last of Us 2? The sonar system and all of that. Will that be in Last of Us 1 now? If not, why not? You're charging full retail price as if this is like Last of Us 2. So why, you better have it. Why not? Well, if you don't have it, what's your excuse? Besides, this is a cash-in, right? Now, I absolutely, absolutely would support this game being sold at a full price to people who need those accessibility features if it's in it. Then I could justify it. But if it's not in there, now they don't even have a leg to stand on, in my opinion, okay? I hope that the reason that they're charging what they're charging for this is because they had those accessibility features transferred over. I really hope so. Okay? And I will say this, if anything, because I've been saying, gee, what kind of people should buy The Last of Us 1 on PlayStation 5 for full price? Well, if you've never played Last of Us 1 at all, then I guess why not? Right? Why not? But get the best version. I mean, I think it's expensive for a game that's this old, but get the, be get the best version of it. Right? Um, if you need the accessibility features, then get it. Get this version. Okay? Anyway, the real story I wanted to talk about today has absolutely <clears throat> nothing to do with, with, with this argument. There's two new spins on the story. The first spin that I have is about The Last of Us 1 Remake. It's sold out already. <laughs> yeah, so I think it was the PlayStation website or something. They, they officially put up pre-orders for the limited run deluxe edition of the game called Firefly Edition. $99.99, not even the $70 version. They put up a limited $100 version. It sold out in one hour. Completely sold out. All right? So it's funny because yesterday we're all talking on the stream, and you know what it is? It's kind of an echo chamber. I know that. My streams are an echo chamber. A lot of people kind of agree with me when I make these kind of points on stream. And a lot of people were of the impression yesterday, wow, this game is not worth 70 bucks. Who in their right mind would buy it for 70 bucks? And I'm like, yeah, I, I agree. That's what I feel. Um, <clears throat> well, apparently a lot of people. A lot, a lot of people actually want to pay $100 for it. And I said this yesterday. I said, it doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter what we believe. As long as this game has the hype behind it that Last of Us 2 did, it will sell in droves. And I actually feel this will be um, a bestseller this year. I feel that way. In fact, all of social media yesterday went crazy for it. There was insane amounts of posts, news stories about it. They're covering this like it's a new release. It's not. It's the same fucking game you played on PS3. Literally, it's the same game. But they're acting like it's a brand new game. And I'm like... <clears throat> gaming is just weird. It, it, it's just odd. So Grand Theft Auto gets released and re-released and re-released. And now we shit, we shit on them. We take big... Stevie dumps on them, right? There's a new trailer. Oh, Grand Theft Auto 5 is coming out on PlayStation 5. And people go to the trailer on YouTube and they downvote it and they leave big stinky assy code turds in the comments. Oh, you're, you're scraping, you know, you're fucking reselling, you're, you're nickel and diamond. Fuck you, Rockstar. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Make Grand Theft Auto 6. Fuck you. Oh, The Last of Us 1 is coming out again for $70 on PS5. Oh, thank you, Mr. Druckmann. Thank you, Druckmann, my lord and savior. Thank you so much. We've been waiting to spend more money on Last of Us for two years. We couldn't. Now we can give you more money. <laughs> I don't know if the reaction could be any further different. And I don't know the difference. I don't get the difference. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what the difference is. It's like the same situation. It's the same game. It's going to run better, have a better graphics. Okay, same thing with GTA V, right? So why shit on one and love the other? I don't know. I, I shat on GTA V. I'll shit on The Last of Us. I'll shit on it all when I think it deserves a nice big dump on it. I don't think that this game needs to be remade for PS5. At all. I definitely think it's a cash-in attempt. I think they saw two years ago this social movement that they created with Last of Us 2. They have a group of hundreds of thousands, if not millions, 
of fans who will buy whatever they put out right now. They created this group. And now they, two years later, said, well, we don't have <clears throat> the multiplayer game ready to sell. Certainly, we don't have a new Last of Us game. And we don't have any, we have nothing in the pipeline. Just resell fucking Last of Us 1 again to make money in the meantime. There's no call. There was no call to remake Last of Us 1 again. You can play Last of Us 1 right now on your PS4. The remastered edition runs perfectly fine on PS5. And it's the only thing I can say, it's not accessible. That's the one thing I can say. It's not accessible. So if you need the accessibility features and this version adds them in, thumbs up. 100%, I'm on the same page as you, sounds good. Outside of that, there's absolutely no reason to resell this game, in my opinion, okay? But, tons of people don't agree with me. $100 version already sold out. Pre-orders are apparently going insane. People are going to buy the fuck out of this game as if it's a new release, okay? Although, admittedly, here's the other half of this story, okay? There was an interesting tidbit of information given out yesterday during... Summer Game Fest that a lot of people didn't catch, but I did. And there's actually been a few other people who've caught this. And are talking about it today, but people don't want to talk about this this side of the story, okay? Neil Druckmann admitted on Summer Game Fest, and he spun it in a positive light. He said, oh, you know, as of now, The Last of Us 2 has sold about 10 million copies, and we couldn't be proud, okay? Yeah, 10 million copies is great. 10 million copies is a great sales number for any game. No one's going to tell you 10 million copies is not amazing. In fact, that probably ranks amongst some of the biggest selling games of all time if you scale them. However, if you actually look at big picture, meaning take a look at Sony exclusives in the last five or so years, okay, that are big budget games similar to The Last of Us 2, all right, and look at their sales numbers. All right. Now, Last of Us 1, as of today, has sold over 20 million copies. Why? Because it's been out for so long. PS3 it sold, PS4 it sold. It's been selling it like hotcakes. That one's like the number one. It will always be number one. It tops everything. But then if you look at all the other games, <clears throat> um, Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man, sold over 20 million copies so far. Okay. God of War Ragnarok, sold over 20 million copies so far. Uncharted 4, I think it sold just under... 20 million copies, like it sold initially, and then didn't they sell it again in a collection, uh, bundled with the DLC, and it sold again, so I think that one's like 18 million or something like that, 19 million, all right, all this stuff, um, and then there's more and more and more and more under, and then you get to The Last of Us 2, I do believe that it ranks among the top 10 Sony exclusives right now, in those last, like, 5-10 years. But it's not even close to the top game. Alright? But what's funny is... They they keep talking about things such as... Um, oh, The Last of Us 2. Right? Is the highest rewarded game ever. It received the most awards of any game. Okay? I guess that means something. You know? I guess it does, you know? Listen, again, if you like the game, good for you. But just because the game got awards doesn't mean that it's, like, the best game ever made. It also doesn't mean it's the best-selling game ever made. Far from it. Other Sony exclusives have sold way more than The Last of Us 2, okay? In fact, if you compare the sales of Last of Us 2 directly to the budget the game took for developing it, as well as the marketing that went into the game, you could even argue that it wasn't nearly as good of a hit as they probably wanted, all right? Like, they really worked hard to try to make this game feel like it was the feel-good game of 2020. You must play it, you must buy it, to stick it to the trolls, social movement behind it, and everything. They did their damnedest. And even then, many other Sony exclusives have beaten it. Oh, I forgot Horizon Zero Dawn. I totally forgot. Horizon Zero Dawn also is up there and sold like 20 million or more copies. So you're talking five, six, seven major franchises all above Last of Us 2 in sales, okay? And here's the other thing too. Again, I will always give credit where credit is due. The Last of Us 2 did a lot of great things. Accessibility, it did 
a humongous service to the gaming community and accessibility. I say it every time I talk about The Last of Us 2, I say those features need to be carried over into every major AAA release. Okay? They do. <clears throat> they absolutely need to be. That would make the world a better place for gamers in general. It would make so many more games accessible if those were carried over. All right? But for, for every instance you could say, oh, this was an amazing thing, then these, these people on social media, they're so insufferable. I, I'm, I'm reading through the post yesterday. Oh, well, Mr. Druckmann admitted that there's a 10 million in sales, so it doesn't matter that people hated on the game. It was still a massive success, and it's the most awarded game ever. Ha ha, we really stuck it to the trolls and haters. I'm not even kidding you. Ha ha, we really stuck it to those bigoted people who don't like the game. Those posts, are, it's two years later. They're still saying this. It's not just me talking about it. They're st they still post like, like it's still going on. It's just like, it's driving me nuts. It's like, oh my, these people don't understand. The wool has been pulled over their goddamn eyes. You know? They can't, they can't think for themselves. They can't. They, they're still in this mindset that because they bought the game and they talked positively about the game that they were a part of, it was a big feel-good social movement. And they changed the world for the better. It's a fucking video game. It's a product to be sold for profit. You didn't change the fucking world because you played Last of Us 2 and liked it. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> These people are, are they're, they're wild things. They think and post. It's out of control. It really is out of control. Listen. All right? I think The Last of Us 2 is a good game. I've told you guys this a million times. And I actually hate having to go back to talk about it over time because it's not a black and white issue. It never is, you know? Just because I didn't like the plot doesn't mean the game was terrible. It wasn't terrible in, by any means. Every time I was playing the game and it wasn't a story segment that I was groaning at, I actually liked it, you know? And again, when I was sitting there on Super Super Blind Man stream, seeing the sonar in action, I was, I was blown away. That was like an eye-opening experience for me to see that in action in a video game and seeing how that could change things for the better for so many people around the world, making gaming accessible, you know? <clears throat> I really, I mean, I wish I could go back in time. Again, I was talking about going back in time in the DeLorean during my John Howard React event about a week ago, right? Smashing my PC when I was ordering those Project 7 t-shirts. Fuck this. Stop the bullshit. Stop the controversy. You know, I wish I'd go back in time and, and just talk to Mr. Druckmann. Just have a conversation with him. Say, Mr. Druckmann, I really want to talk to you about something, all right? You're about to do something you're going to regret because what you're about to do by, by falsely advertising your game, which they absolutely did. You can't deny that they didn't. They falsely advertised the game, saying that Joel was going to be like the protagonist again. It's a lie, okay? See, what you're about to do by, by creating this shit-stirring situation, you're going to do yourself a disservice. You're about to put out a game, all right, that could change gaming for people all over the world, but you're going to create such a fucking controversy around it for the sake of of creating controversy to sell copies that you're going to have this hate group that's going to be formed on the internet and they're going to be dumb shit and they're going to troll you and then what are you going to do? You're going to go into defense mode and then you're going to make it about you versus them and then no one will remember the game for what it was. Instead, it's always going to be this stupid discussion about these bigots over here and these fanboys over here, the liberals versus these people and that's it, not what the game should be about at all. Okay? It shouldn't. It should be about the game. Let the game speak for itself. It doesn't have to be about the narrative online of these, these groups fighting or anything. Just cut the shit. Just sell the game for what it is. And when someone asks you about getting hated on because you have, uh, you know, uh, a queer main character in Ellie or a more masculine protagonist in Abby, just shut up. Seriously, just keep your mouth shut. Because whatever you say is going to blow up in your face and then you're going to create this giant tox toxic cloud online that you're never going to recover from. It's always going to be about that instead of the game. I wish I could just have a conversation with the dude. Just to say, listen, just, we got to cut this shit out so we can actually have the game be enjoyed for on its own merits. Because right now what I see on the internet is fanboys on one side and haters on the other. We're the rational people. The rational people get drowned out. 
The rational people can't even be heard because it's always us versus them mentality. It's kind of like American politics right now. You got the super right conservatives and the super liberal left Democrats, you know, and it's like, no one can actually like go down the middle and say, let's work together to make the world a better place. Instead, it's fuck you, fuck you, hate you, hate you. Oh my God, I hate it. I hate politics and I hate this topic. I want to rip, rip my, my desk up. <laughs> Straight up on my head. I hate this topic. Why can't we just talk about games, right? Why does it always have to be about this shit? You know? I get, the thing is, like, I can understand, too, why Neil Druckmann did what he did. I get it. I just, I don't think it's right what he did. At the same time, you know, when you're under attack by a bunch of fucking idiots, you go into defense mode. I've done it a million times in my history. You know, I've been, recently I've been doing these reacts, right, to my, my history as a content creator, looking at my down the rabbit hole, how I used to respond to my haters and shit and how dumb I was and the way that I would respond and it would just cause more problems. You know? You just let the work speak for itself. And then and then let the people decide. Don't create a narrative around it. And I feel that narrative, seriously now... So now, Last of Us 1 is being remade and coming out and what's the discourse? Oh... Either you love it and you're going to buy it or you're a hater. What the fuck are you talking about? Just because I'm critical of oh, The Last of Us 1 being remade and sold for $70 doesn't make me a fucking hater. I love The Last of Us 1. I think it's an outstanding game, man. <sighs> I got to turn on my air conditioner. It's hot in here now. Plus, I got a little animated there. Anyway... It really doesn't matter what I say because Last of Us 1 Remastered or Remake or whatever the fuck they're calling it is going to sell in droves anyway. Um, and likely, the TV show is going to come out. It's going to be a hit. All right? It, it doesn't matter. This is a dynamo. This is, not a, this is now... It's become a social justice movement where you must like The Last of Us and if you don't, oh, you're some bigot or hater. That's literally the narrative I see all over social media now. Two years later, that's still the narrative. That's fucked. That's a fucked narrative, man. Because that couldn't be further from the truth. But when you hide any criticism under the guise of hate, and then you wonder why people are upset, of course, right? You have the right to criticize this game coming out for 70 bucks. I have, I have absolutely no problem with this game coming out again for $30 or $40. $70 is insane. You're telling me you that's a, that's a new game. That's a new game price tag. You're literally reusing the same assets when it comes to the story, the mocap. There's no new game uh, script, no new direction of the game. It's literally the same game with better graphics and some new gameplay elements. It's not a new release. So sell selling it for 70 bucks is absolutely ridiculous. But that's just my take, and you can disagree. And if you do, more power to you. That's your right, you know? I, I likely... I'd be, I'd be curious, Super Blind Man, if he's still here, I'd like to hear his take on the situation. How does he feel? As someone who directly was responsible for a large chunk of these accessibility features in The Last of Us 2, being in the game, okay, and making that game accessible to so many people around the world, all right? I would be curious, how, what is his reaction to all this shit all over the internet now about The Last of Us 1 re-release? Because to me, if that were me, and this is just my take, I would be sad because yeah, you want it to be about the positive. You want it to, the discussion to be about the positive things. Instead, all I see is, ha, 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 we're really getting them. We're going to buy this game again, and we're going to stick it to the haters. And then you got the other idiots, <laughs> the fucking liberal motherfuckers, do a bunch of dumbasses. I don't see any intelligence, <laughs> and it frustrates me. Where are the smart people? Where did they go? They're there. They just, you know what it is? It's the silent majority again, right? The smart people don't want to get engaged in this fucking this stupid discourse. So they just shut up and just let the idiots yell at each other on Twitter, I think. I, I'm very happy to hear that. Super Blind Man says, to this day, he's still getting daily thank you messages for the accessibility features that he worked on on Last of Us 2. And rightly so. Rightly freaking so. You know? Rightly so, man. I, I wish that, again, I can't believe we're two years later and so few games have implemented those features. I think so many could have. And now I look pink because my auto adjustment just turned on on my webcam. 
Okay. Half of Twitter is fake bots. Well, don't tell Elon Musk. He's looking for the evidence. <laughs> That's a whole other story. All right, no. Let's not let's not go off the rails here. Actually, I gotta change. I gotta fix this camera. This camera's making me look like I'm about to explode again. When this camera does the color adjustment, it makes me look like my bro blood pressure is like crazy. All right, let's go back. Here we go. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Shit, my bad, guys. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, keep my hand here, and then I gotta click a color adjustment. There we go. Okay. Hooey. All right. Let's do shout outs because this, this stream is going way too long. <clears throat> uh, hold on. I somehow got completely logged out of my fucking stream labs. Uh, how did this happen? Did it? Oh, come on. It totally. Moved me out of everything. Uh. Why did he do this? You stupid thing. All I want to see is the contributions, and I can't see it. I don't even know. They changed everything. Maybe that's why. I think Streamlabs just changed their website. Okay, Super Blind Man says, here's my take on the internet. You find what you're looking for. I'm seeing people who don't want the remake. My timeline is people asking or hoping for accessibility features to be in it. And that's good. I hope that... I Man, they better be in it. No, really. Now, I, they better be in it. They better fucking be in it. If they're going to charge that much, they better be in it. Like, people got to put their foot down. That was accessibility features fucking better be in Last of Us 1. Re-release, re remake, rebooted, regurgitated. Whatever it's called. They better be in there. What the fuck? <clears throat> Why is it doing this? Yeah. They changed... Streamlabs changed their, their service. And now I can't even find... Everything's different now. The drop down's different. Partner discounts, membership. What is this? I can't even find stuff on the Streamlabs website anymore. They changed it. Theme. Download Streamlabs. Streamlabs mobile app. What the fuck is Melon Browser streaming? I don't want that. What the fuck is this? The whole site's different. Can I seriously not monitor <clears throat> my YouTube site contributions anymore because Streamlabs updated and now it doesn't exist? It doesn't look like it exists. Hold on. I'm going to try this on my desktop to try to figure this out. This is fucking stupid. It is supposed to be there, but it's, it's, they fucked it up. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they forced a refresh of their site. And when they did, it redesigned certain menus to the point where now those menus have to be reloaded. So how do I pop this out now? Like that. Okay. All right, we're good. 
Streamlabs forcing a reload and it screws up the whole queue. Now I can see you guys' contributions again. My bad. At least we got this, this fixed before I started the game. That would have been frustrating. Okay, so we start off today with Ruby, who did a super chat saying Saturday night fights should be called Saturday nights all right for fighting. <laughs> well, we're only doing it this week. Next week we'll go back to Friday. Um. <clears throat> oh, really? Hobo X says Streamlabs is a terrible company. They got outed for a lot of shady things, including lying to other companies that they're working with. Most streamers have ditched them entirely after that came out. I only use them to monitor YouTube side contributions. That's it. I don't use them for anything else. The problem is, um, well, let me think about this. Yeah, I can't take tips through Streamlabs because they're the ones who ban me because they're assholes. I think I tried to get this, the YouTube stuff to work through Stream Elements, and I couldn't get it to work, and that's why I still use Streamlabs for that. Anyway, I mean that was like a year ago. Um, so let's see here. They tried to steal OBS code and violated their open source terms. That's delightful. Anyway, uh, Mango Jewel Pods did a super chat saying, Quarry time, let's punch some monsters. But he says, let's cooter punch some monsters. He wants to punch monsters in the cooter. Good for you. Uh, Ruby did a super chat. Speaking of the new Teenage Mutant Turtles game, they're actually releasing 13 classic games remastered called the Cowabunga Collection. I am aware of that. However, you may not be aware of this. All right. <laughs> Prepare yourselves. The company that made this Cowabunga collection is the same company that made the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection! <laughs> ah! And that's probably scarier than anything we're about to experience in the quarry. We all know how unfinished and broken the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection is. However, I will say this. If you're just playing... The Street Fighter... Aren't they called Digital Eclipse? I think that's the name of the studio. If you're just uh, playing the offline content of the Street Fighter collection, it's not that bad at all. If you're just playing it as like a historical preservation of the history of Street Fighter games, and you're only playing against people offline, it's not that bad. As soon as you go online is when the problems start. You know, the matchmaking is terrible... The lobby system didn't even work at launch, and then when it started to work, they never added in basic features like the ability to kick or ban someone, um, the constant crashing, the constant bugs and glitches, the, f the fact that the game runs at the wrong speed. I mean, there's a million things that's wrong with that collection, you know? So for me, I'm nervous because I'm interested in the Cowabunga collection. I like those classic games. I like to play them, but... Do I want to give more money to a company that literally ripped everyone off with this 30th anniversary collection, didn't give a shit about the problems, ignored them, and never fixed it? You know? Um, I don't know. And by the way, they're going to resell this fucking game again. They're reselling it with a bundle, along with the upcoming Capcom fighting collection, even though it's a broken collection that doesn't work right. So, I don't know. I'm thinking about getting it. I'm on the fence. Marvel Mania did a Super Chat saying... Phil is kind of based on about Naughty Dog and Last of Us 2. The game wasn't all it was cracked up to be, but the media wants to suck off Druckmann. I mean, you could, ex you could, you're doing very large sexual extrapolation there, you know, really enhancing the situation. I don't think they want to suck him off. I just think that, again, sometimes there's agendas, there's movements. They absolutely use The Last of Us 2 as a way to push a certain movement agenda. They want more uh, progressive. Characters and plot lines in video games. I'm actually for that. I'm not against it at all. I prefer more of that. I don't want the same stereotypical characters in video games anymore. I'm tired of them. I'd like to see better representation. I'd like to see more variety in the games. I want that. Okay? But not at the expense of saying it's the best game ever made. <laughs> you know? Anyway, let's not let's not get into that. Kyle Denson did a super chat says, Naughty Dog sucks. Crash and Uncharted for the win. <laughs> okay. And then Argos did a super chat says, Do you like melons? I like certain melons. I think watermelon's good. And I think, is it, I think it's cantaloupe is the one that I like. I think honeydew is the one that's not as sweet. I like the one that's sweet and juicy. That's the melon I like. And I can't remember if it's cantaloupe or honeydew. I always get them confused. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. So there were two tips that came in early before the stream started from Slayer. First Slayer tip the dollar fifty says, 
I've enjoyed your live reactions and recap of Summer Game Fest. One Piece Odyssey was revealed. It's a turn-based game with an original story. I still think that you should play the game that you started previously to get more lore for the characters. Then here's another tip, $1.50. <clears throat> It'd be great for you to play One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. You'll get the story caught up before playing the new One Piece game. I noticed in the quarry, a lot of these teenage characters may actually be returning from Until Dawn. Interestingly enough, I don't necessarily know if these characters are supposed to be teens, because they're supposed to be camp counselors, right? And I don't know. Like, I, I think the day's supposed to be set in, it's supposed to be set in modern day, isn't it? Or maybe not. Maybe it's set in the 80s. In the 80s, like, it was kind of cliche that camp counselors were always, like, teenagers looking for summer work. While today, I don't even think they would let camp counselors be teenagers, right? I guess we'll have to see. But anyway, if there's returning actors, that would be interesting. See if we could recognize them. Um, Orson Welles tipped $4.20 and says, Loving the content. Keep up the good work. If anyone is looking for me, tell them I'm in Mexico. All right, there you go. <laughs> I don't know who would be looking for you. Orson Welles. But thank you very much for the tip. Okay. All right, and with that, uh, I think we uh, pretty much covered everything, right? We've uh, finished up with all the topics. We got all the discussion out there. No expand on the people making uh, this new Capcom Fighting Collection is not the same company. It's not Digital Eclipse. It's a completely different company making this new one. And they have promised all these new things. They said they will have the better rollback netcode, better online capabilities than, you know, <clears throat> than, say, the 30th anniversary. It's a completely different company. Yeah, I thought it was as well. And no, I was corrected. People were like, no, it's actually a completely different company. So, yeah. Welcome back, Jane. Okay. Uh, are we ready? Are we ready to get started? Did you guys have enough of me blabbing? I think I've had enough of me blabbing. <clears throat> I want to play the game. <clears throat> yeah? No more flapping of my jowls. <laughs> Every time that the killer appears on screen, instead I'm just going to go full screen like this, and he's going to be, oh, the killer's going to get us, and I'm going to go, oh, and scare the shit out of you. Like, oh! <laughs> That's scarier than anything we're going to see. All right. Let us end the pre-stream. I'm going to take a leak quickly, and then we're going to get started. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 